Let's go back to it. Cost of living and other issues. Tony is in Bristol. What have you got for us, Tony? Hi. Well, on, on sleep, since you're talking about that, yeah. I mean, isn't that, a lot, you know, largely to do... It's a bit like obesity. If people are anxious, they have trouble sleeping. If people are anxious, they eat more. Yeah. And I think we're, we're, we're in a kind of pandemic of angst. You know, this the, the German word for fear, which which is really about a kind of... Well, we don't know what we're we're worried about, but we're worried. And now our mind is searching around. You know, we're kind of distracted. I think that's what's going on with people who, who have... Uh, I don't think you're going to get it. This is the blasted Zuckerberg and his metaverse, isn't it? There's an app for everything. Not. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, but is an app just really like the 21st century version of a little bit of counselling? No, no. The the I, I, well, I mean, that's what they're trying to make it. But of course, nothing will um, replace the traditional way, which was if people have got some you know major problems in their life they're struggling with, they, they would go and talk to the local vicar, the local priest. Yeah, true. You know, the church is hardly there anymore for that sort of thing. Although maybe it's just that we we're, we're programmed not to go there to look for it, to go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's true. Else. But is this a, a kind of a, a, a contemporary way? Do you think of trying to get us? back to a, a lack of reliance on medicine and doctors and even though it's not quite the church but the app is essentially just counseling on your phone i guess look my prescription would be more cockerels people get to bed early <laughs> get up get up earlier unleash the cockerels yeah, well, um, in Belgium, um, it's, uh, when I visited there, I was amazed. Loads of people keep these. Look, do they? China, is that a Belgian yeah. thing? Yes, they do. A lot. Of, I mean, it's, there are other countries on the continent where quite a lot of people keep animals, maybe a goat or something, things like that. Even in ta even in the towns, certainly along the coast, I was surprised to see a lot of backyards have got animals in. And of course, it's a, it's a food supply. If the supermarket runs out, there's something there for you. Why not? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if you're in the, seriously, we've got trains at four o'clock in the morning. In fact, some in the middle of the night, which will wake people up. What's the problem exactly? I think we've just got not we've got used to not having animals around us, and that's why people are, you know. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, I wanted to talk about the cost of living crisis, sure. really, because I'm getting fed up with hearing about fuel, fuel, fuel. You know, uh, gas all the time. Yeah. Um, if you look at the stats in the US, it's forty percent. In the UK, it's around about a third, 33% of our money is going on housing. Housing, rent, mortgage repayments. This yeah. is, I've just had an enormous rent increase. And the landlord said, uh, well, look, if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but there's a big queue of people. Yeah. And uh, th this, I think, is underlying everything. It's, it, it, in a way, the, the recent increases in, uh, in fuel have just tipped a lot of people over the edge. And the underlying fundamental problem is, uh, we did a study a few years ago um, in a, when I was part of a campaigning group to look at how much a house costs to build and how much it costs to buy because almost everything that you're paying when you buy a house is the value of the land underneath it. Correct. So it costs around about 100 grand to to, buy, to build a two-bedroom house, uh, around about 100 grand in terms of materials and labor costs, and that lasts about 200 years. And you know what that works out at? Go on. Ten pounds a week. Wow. So the other, the other, whatever, 90 percent we're spending on our housing, whether it's mortgage repayments or rent. Yeah, yeah. Is just profiteering. It's an art. It's a kind of an artificial. Well, you know, I always think that when somebody goes, "Have you seen this one-bedroom flat in London or something that's worth, you know, two million pounds?" and you think, "Well, it's not. It 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 really isn't worth that. It's an artificial uh, tag that's added." I, I know the market forces and all the rest of it, and for some reason, no one has been able to. No, no great brain anywhere has been able to say, Do "You know what? This is now ridiculous." And perhaps it's just got to that stage where, if you kind of artificially reduce the value of all houses and said to it, "Right, okay, that house that was four hundred grand is now a hundred grand," then of course you leave everybody with negative equity, so you create another problem. Tony, thank you for that. I like the thinking though, because it is literally a man-made construct. And th then it goes on to be fueled by the markets. And the cost of that is now, you know, you're, you're earning more out of a piece of brick than you would be out of a piece of gold. And that's clearly a nonsense.